you know, maybe in the near future, we could be watching one of these SpaceX missions, you know, like and, and listening to it like straight to our brains, you know, with like Neuralink or something. Maybe. How is that? So let's talk about that. <laughs> uh, not a whole lot to this story, to be honest with you, but um, it's basically just kind of reporting on uh, a tweet that Elon had responded to. But basically, yeah, as you can read on the screen, it says he says that Neuralink will stream music straight into your brain. Uh, have you ever used any of the headphones that are like the conductive, the skull conductive headphones or I'm probably using the wrong word there, but you know what I'm talking I know about? What you're ta- yeah. I haven't ever used them, but I know what you're talking about. You haven't? Yeah. No. Have they're, you? They're kind of amazing because it's, well, okay. It's kind of got my, I got my other headphones on, but like the, the bone right in front, bone conducting. That's what That sounds is. right. Yeah. Yeah. It's like right in front of your ear. So you got this like thing that goes around the back of your head and then it's like boom right there in front of your ear so you can hear it but you can also like hear everything around you because there's nothing plugging your ears like 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 earbuds or something mm. um I, I i saw some in the store and i tried them on and i was like dude this is crazy and it actually sounded pretty good um mm. so anyway i mean that's that's i guess that's kind of the idea here is if you've got that little implant in your brain you'll be able to just pipe in some music Huh? Hmm. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. Absolutely. No, uh, it just says you? here in this article, this is from futurism. It says, uh, uh, yeah, some guy named Howard, Austin Howard asked on Twitter, um, when one day we'd be able to music stream music directly into your brain through the interface. And he just said, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and now there's an article about it. And now there's an article. Yeah, exactly. Ah, so um, I need to turn I was on my not, thing. <laughs> I wasn't aware that, um, there was a Neuralink thing coming up next month. I should have been more uh, keeping like a track of that. Or a presentation, yeah. I guess so. It says uh, they're gearing up for a long-awaited reveal. I guess that's going to add on to yeah, what they did last year. I didn't even know about year. that. I don't remember. I didn't either. I, I need to... Yeah, Elon's yeah they announced it recently, there, right? Oh, Elon let's, let's mentioned it in a talk, I think, or something. Wasn't it some kind of public thing? Yeah, it was pretty Elon recent Musk that he mentioned it. Elon major Neuralink reveal. Um, hmm. Maybe oh, just we'll update again. on his progress August 28th. <laughs> so yeah, context suggests it may be a major reveal. I'm still, I'm still very curious. I, I don't know, man. I mean, his timelines for everything. So on the earnings call, he also mentioned that uh, he's still hopeful of releasing the full self-driving software uh, by the end of the year, like like all the features. Yeah, you know, yeah. not to say it would be totally ready for the world yet, but it would be there. It'd be released. Uh, and you know, this but he kind said of thing, that last year and the year before, I think. <laughs> yeah. Well, and didn't um, he talked? Must talked a lot about this on Joe Rogan's podcast, right? Um, where they're talking, Neuralink? yeah, like half of their yeah. second thing was all about Neuralink and whatever. But I just remember, I just remember hearing that going, "No way, man! <laughs> no way! Not in my lifetime." I know Tim, you had some other thoughts, but I'm very curious to see what they reveal because. To me, it all just still sounds like voodoo in some some aspects. Well, so, I mean, they kind of mention here, they say it's not entirely clear if the brain-computer interface will be able to bypass the ear, the cochlear nerves, and beam music magically into the auditory brain. Um, so my understanding is that it, the, the first things that they're going to be working on is basically giving uh, paralyzed people the ability to interact with computers and maybe even, uh, control prosthetics and stuff like that. You know, I mean, obviously that's what we need to focus on first, (laughs) you know? Mm -hmm. So that's clearly the motor cortex. Um, and I'm not sure exactly where the brain, where in the brain, the motor cortex is in, in relation to say the auditory cortex or whatnot. But, um, I don't know, is that going to mean multiple implants in various places to access those different parts? Um, something else that's right here that I think is actually pretty interesting is it says, um, another user asked if it could help stimulate the release of oxytocin, serotonin, and other chemicals when needed. And he said, yes. So that Woo-hoo. can help with Love a lot drugs. of, <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, that, that well, mean, it could um, definitely help regulate those things. Depression especially people and that have, stuff. Yeah. People that probably have, better than taking drugs. Right. It could be natural. You know? It could be your body's response naturally and naturally balanced as, as would be yeah. healthily deemed. So the whole thing that people are forgetting is this is just an input output signal processing idea. It's literally the idea is like, imagine that um, someone that doesn't speak your language that you've never, you know, you can't communicate with them at all, has this giant server farm that's thousands of supercomputers. And 
you, your first step is, okay, I guess the first thing I can do is literally just attach a, a network cable to every single one and interpret what it's doing, you know, like mm -hmm. in and out, what's all this data doing and start trying to map it and be like, okay, this goes here, this goes here, this goes da, 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 da. when this guy's sending this message, it goes to here. When they're trying to reply to this message, it goes there and then start interpreting, you know, interpreting it. And, and, and eventually you could figure it out. You could start learning the language. You could start learning the routing of it. And so literally the idea is if there is a cable or a tiny little thread that is sensitive to elect, you know, electric impulses and can also send those similar, you know, clone and mimic those electric impulses, you can literally read and also communicate directly to the brain everywhere. That's all mm -hmm. it is. So we're doing that already with cochlear implants. You know, cochlear implant is a very primitive thing that just has some electrodes connected directly to the auditory you know, it's part of your brain and then it replicates really basic versions of sound. We also have that with with ocular, with your with your vision. People have like 64 dots that yeah. help represent vision for those that don't have working, you know, ner optic nerves and things like that. And it's just bypassing. All it's doing is sending similar electron, you know, electric impulses to the brain and or receiving them. So, of course, if you had a high enough fidelity way to send music directly and create the exact electromagnetic patterns in the same areas as when you're listening to a song. You could literally map what is the brain receiving when you're listening to the song with your ears. And then if if those cables just repeated that, you know, they listened, saw which areas of the brain are lighting up, and then literally just repeated those signals, it'd feel like you're listening to this song directly in your head. Mm -hmm. Would I mean, you that's hear all it, it or would you just it, it, feel like you're hearing it? <laughs> Does a I tree fall in like the forest? You, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, you, like if I get a song stuck in my head all day long. Well, I mean, yeah, to you as like, the listener, it would it would be just as if you could replicate as if it were literally coming in through your ears. You know, you could hear echoes in the room if you're if you say you were listening to loudspeakers and the room you were listening to had just some natural room, you know, reverb. And you recorded that using Neuralink, right? Like recorded the stimulation of your brain. You could literally hit play and feel like those speakers are still on. You could be convinced that those speakers are still on. You know, someone can go up and unplug it and you would feel like it's still reverberating in the room because your brain is still receiving those exact signals as if mm -hmm. your ears were giving them to your brain. That's like the crazy thing about all this stuff is it's just going to mimic what our brain's already doing did, and did what our body's already that, doing. So... I I got I got a little lost in there, Tim. So did did he or were you saying that this would be like internet connected? Um, well, I mean, like the it, the the cochlear thing, if I understand right, like when he, it hears a sound, it's not like sending that to a server farm to interpret it, right? Like it has that software, that translation built in, right? Right. So is that how so, this is going to work? Like, like this is disconnected, or does this always have to be connected? Neuralink is know? just the physical connection to the brain. That's uh -huh. all this idea is. And then from there, it's a matter of machine learning. So there's going to be a device that has to be able to learn and or listen, and then yeah, eventually upload and aggregate all that stuff. Eventually, like the whole theories of everything, you know, to the machine learning. But then eventually, it can do some local processing of that. You know, eventually it'll be local. Like, jeez. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Siri just interrupted. <laughs> Creepy. <laughs> but it can do some local was. interpretation of that stuff, you know, once it's kind of solved, once the brain mapping's done. Yeah, like, just do like local... imagine you have two people out, because Elon said, I think, that people would need to speak eventually, right? Mm -hmm. So imagine if you're, I don't know, two people out uh, somewhere without cell signal or something like that, and, and you want to use this to communicate, y it would have to work offline, I mm. guess. Now that mm -hmm. you would still have to have a, uh, some kind of data connection between the two units. That's what I'm so, saying. Yes, so you would have to have some yeah. kind of relay there. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Well, yeah. that that whole uh, being able to regulate your uh, your hormones, your uh, serotonin and dopamine and whatnot, like. I'm just imagining an app on your phone where you're like I'm just not in a good mood today, so I'm just gonna yes. slide my happiness oh my God. thing over. Well, in, in I mean, theory, this that's... form of that. <laughs> well, in Instead theory, the it could just form. sense it could just sense that your serotonin is low or whatever, and be like, "Here, we're just gonna automatically make sure you're oh, at a perfect sense it, sure. ten learning level. thermostat." It's, it's your kind of emotional thing. thermostat. Yes. Brought I mean, to you by Google. <laughs> <laughs> 
I mean, again, the, the, physically, there's nothing that would prevent any of this stuff. It's all just electromechanical impulses, like very slight little electric impulses. And if you can mimic those and clone those, you can do anything. Now, just like do the we Matrix. Know... Yay, we're going to live in the Matrix. <laughs> that didn't go wrong. Uh, it reminds <laughs> me of that movie, I think it was called Surrogates with, uh, with Bruce Willis, where eventually we've evolved to... Like living out in the wild is in the world is so dangerous that we just live in pods now, like the Matrix. Mm-hmm. But then mm-hmm. in the real world is like a twenty-five year old version of ourselves running around, you know. And so everyone is like uh, young and good looking and in great shape, and you can eat whatever the hell you want because it's just a like an android robot out there. Mm-hmm. Um, but you yourself are in this like gel pod in your house connected and like you don't come out for wait. weeks yeah <laughs> but this is that's what i that mean sounds that's awesome yeah. we're getting that way already like especially with i mean co- i already the- live in a gel pod <laughs> so to have you know a robot out there yeah but that is yep. i mean that's the way we're going already look at i mean we're living so much more of our lives online than we did 10 20 years ago by infinite it's just going whoop and this pandemic proved that even more that like Oh, you don't really, mm. you don't need to go outside even. We'll take care of you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It'll be the Matrix, but instead of like how the Matrix was, the concept in the movie, uh, it would be we all have our own personalized Matrix. So whatever right. world we want to envision is the world we, it's kind of like, it's kind of like Facebook comes to real life, right? It's like your own echo chamber. How could this go wrong? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Hey guys, thanks so much for watching this clip from our show. If that's just not enough for you and you want to watch the full episode, you can go to olfpod.com slash YT. And if you want more from us, you can consider becoming a Patreon member. You'll get early access to episodes. You can join our awesome community. You can actually watch us record live and get your name in the credits by going to olfpod.com slash Patreon. So thanks everyone for watching. Check back every Friday for new clips here and new episodes on the main channel. Thanks, everybody.